وائز بوان علی ابراہیم ادیس صورت الحج اینڈ ہیئر یو ول فائنڈ ٹو سیکشنز آف دس سورہ ڈیووٹیڈ ٹو حج وی ہیو ٹو سیکشنز آف صورت البقرہ 24 25 ڈیووٹیڈ فار دی سیریمنیز اینڈ ریچولز آف اینڈ رائٹس آف حج اینڈ ٹو سیکشنز آف دس صورت الحج دس از بکی سورہ اینڈ دیٹ از مدنی سورہ وائز بوان علی ابراہیم مکان البیت And when we showed and pointed to Ibrahim alayhi salam, the place of our house, as I told you, it was built by Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, but then it was de- demolished and destroyed due to floods. There were no signs, but the foundations were there. But these foundations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disclosed to Hazrat Ibrahim, that build again on these foundations. When Babwa anal Ibrahim amakar al-bayti, when we pointed to them disclosed to them the place of our house allah tushrik bi shaya that when you reveal this house what will be the principles don't associate with me anything anyone number one wa tahir baitiya and keep my house clean for those li taifin who come here for circumambulation wal qaimin and who come here for standing in prayer before us were rukai sujood and those who bow and prostrate before us in this mosque so you have to keep it clean now this cleanliness had to be two you know dimensions a in, internal cleanliness that there should be no shirk over here there should be tawhid pure tawhid here and number two there should be no filth people when come here they should feel you know that they are at a very good place not that they are troubled by some bad smell or something or of that type some you know is there which is not very pleasant to do and this work is being done to the best of their capacity by the present rulers of saudi arabia in other respects we differ with them and they are not you know for us you know people who can be liked no their luxuries and their spending extravagantly billions and billions of dollars on one palace and in that palace the king comes only once a year for five seven days and so much you know his staff over there everything a pomp and show this is not this is not islam then you know the dictatorship kingship people have no right they have no say in the matters of the government so this is not islam but whatever good they are doing we must accept Number one, the service to Quran, publishing of Quran, many very beautiful you know, forms, and distributing millions of the copies of Quran to people, without any price. And number two, the service to the haramain, the extensions that have taken place, how much money they have spent is unimaginable. When you go and see, so actually this, and they keep it clean. There are hundreds of people working day and night over there, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Otherwise, such a big crowd coming there. Even children are there. They don't bar them. So, but, but it remains clean, very clean. And tahira baitiya, wa tahir baitiya li taifina wal qaimina wa rukai sujood. Number one, you keep it clean from shirk. Number two, you keep it clean also for those people who come for tawaf, circumambulation of, of the house of Allah. and you know who stand in prayer and who bow down and who prostrate wa azin fi nas bil hajj and now give a call to the people for hajj how he might have called no loud speakers nothing no communication channels nothing of the sort no it nothing of the sort but he called he stood up at some high place and gave the azan come for this hajj And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conveyed his voice to people far and wide, far away. And people started coming, performing hajj. And azzin fin nasi bil hajj. You call, give a call to the people for hajj. Yatu ka rejalan. They will come to you on foot also. Wa ala kulli zamirin. And on very lean camels. Yatina min kulli fajjin amir. Which will be coming from through the mountainous highways which are very deep. Deep valleys. They yes, Hadu manafi Allahum, so that they come here and witness the benefits that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has given to this place. 
and the spiritual benefits that, that they can have while you know performing hajj and umrah la yashhadu manafi'a lahu wa yazkuru isma Allah 'alayhi fi ayyam al wa yazkuru isma Allah fi ayyam al ma'lumat and then they should mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on cattle which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you ala ma razaqahum min bahimati al-anam in the fixed days those fixed days are the 10th of zulhij yawm an-nahr then 11th 12th and 13th these are the four days during which you have to make sacrifice either goats or sheep or camels or cows etc etc was wa yaskuru isma Allah fi ayyam ma'lumat ala ma razaqahum min bahimati al-anam fa kulu minha so eat you also from that wa at'imu al-ba'is al-faqir and also feed the disappointed poor persons summa la yaqzu tafsahum then they should remove their unkemptness because in ihram you know they might have been very dirty ihram people coming on camels or coming on foot from very far off areas in the month of you know, summer months etc so and in the ihram you know there are so limitations certain limitations so now you might be full of dirt your hair now you can which which we say now you finish your ihram so you can take a bath so go go a respect and summal yaqzu tafasahum they should end their unkemptness wal yufu nuzurahum and fulfill their vows wal yatawafu bil bait al atiq and then they should go a circle and bullet round the ancient house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is tawaf al ziyara on the 10th of zulhij after giving the sacrifice then you know people go they take a bath they put on good dress and then they go and circle and bullet and make tawaf of the house of allah this is called tawaf al ziyara zalik this it is this is settled by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the rights of the hajj that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching you wa may yu'zim hurumat allah fa huwa khairul lahu inda rabbi whosoever respects the sacred ordinances of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then it's, it is better for him with his lord when he returns to his lord he will get the reward wa uhillat lakum al-anam illa ma yatla alaykum and all the cattle have been declared permissible halal for you except the one which has been told to you many times and that is you know swine pig otherwise goats and sheep and and cows and buffaloes and camels all these can be sacrificed auhillat lakum al-anam illa ma yutla alaykum fajtanibu ar-rishsa min al-awsab so you should shun the abomin abomination from the idols which the book of azur and shun the speaking of falsehood this is the moral aspect of hajj not only these rituals but also you have to be away keep away from these idols false gods and keep away from telling the lies and and something which is not true kona faalillah and you should be straight and upright exclusive for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ghayra mushrikeen bi without making anybody anything associating with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa may yushrik billah and whosoever associates some false god with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa kan ma kharra min as-sama it is as if he has been thrown from the height fa takhtafu at-tayr so now either the birds of prey in the air they are snatching it away aw tahwi bihi rih fi makan sahih or the wind sweeps him to a remote place he has no support if he is committing shirk if he is attached to allah subhanahu wa taala with tauhid allah will support him allah will help him but otherwise he has no support no help zalik this is as it is wa man yu'zzim sha'ir allah fa innaha min taqwa al-qulub and whosoever respects the sanctity of the symbols of allah emblems of allah sha'ir allah quran is sha'ir allah kaaba is from sha'ir allah and these sacrificial animals are also sha'ir allah lakum fiha manafi' ila ajal musamma in these animal and cattle for sacrifice you have benefits for but till at a, till till a fixed time when you are taking the animals well you can ride on them no harm 
if some milk animal is there, it's a cow, you can drink the milk. But when summa mahilloha ilal baytil atiq, then the final place where it must be sacrificed is the ancient house, near the ancient house. Actually, Marwa, the hillock, that was in the olden times the place of Ziba. But then, you know, when Mecca started, you know, becoming bigger and bigger and bigger, then it went to Mumbina. Otherwise, this Marwa was the place of sacrificing animals. And for very Ummah, we had fixed and we had prescribed the devotional rites of sacrifice so that they should mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the cattle that Allah has given them. But the essence of all this is Tawheed. Your Lord is one Lord. So surrender to Him. You are sacrificing animals but not surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the use? You have sacrificed, you know, a very good, uh, for example, a very good animal and you have spent maybe thousands in Pakistan in 50,000 rupees of a very good camel, very, very good, you know, goat. But whatever, the taqwa is not there in you. You are not surrendering yourself to the will of Allah. So all this you are spending goes in vain. Allah doesn't accept. The ayah is coming. فَلَهُ أَسْلَمُ وَبَشَّرِ الْمُخْبِتِينَ And O Prophet وسلم, give glad tidings to the those who are humble to Allah. الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِرَتْ قُلُوبَهُمْ Who are those? That when Allah is mentioned, their hearts tremble in fear. وَسَابِرِينَ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَهُمْ And they persevere and bear Whatever comes to them, because they know it is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from none else than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Muqim is salati, and the establishers of salah, and whatever we have given them, they spent. Well, these camels for the sacrifice, them also we have declared to be shahir of Allah. They are the emblems and symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lakum fi akhir. You have benefits out of it. Well, when we sacrifice the camel, where will the meat go? To your pe- it's poor people. They will eat it. For a very long time, I think, till very near past, the sole source of income of those people living here was the sacrifices of the, of the Hajjaj, the pilgrims. There, nothing was grown over there. No farming, nothing of the sort. You know, the hajis used to come. They purchased the animals. So they raised flocks of sheep and goats. And they got very good price. And then when they sacrificed, where did the meat go? They kept, they took the meat, dried it up and kept it. And ate it during the whole year. Dried up, dried up meat. So this was actually the source of income for them. وَالْبُدْنَا جَعَلْنَاهَا لَكُمْ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ لَكُمْ فِيهَا خَيْرِ فَاسْكُرُوا اسْمَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهَا سَوَاف So mention the name of Allah on them, making them stand in a row. فَإِذَا وَجَبَتْ جُنُوبُهَا You know, if a, pierce, a, a spear is pierced into the neck of the camel when he is standing. It is not, you know, ziba lying down, no. A spear that pierces the neck. So, a stream of blood gushes out. And when much of the blood has flow, blow, flown out, then the camel, you know, falls down on one side. Then now, you can, you can make the pieces of the meat from that. When they fall down on their sides, now eat from it. And feed also those also who are contented, poor but are not begging, and also who are begging. In this way, we have subjected them to you so that you may be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
neither the meat of these sacrificial animals reaches Allah, nor the blood. The meat you eat, the blood goes in vain. But today that doesn't go in vain. From that blood, you know, poultry feed is prepared and so many things. Everything is now used. But at, in the ancient time, blood, well, it went away, but meat was eaten. But to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, neither the meat nor the blood. It's neither their flesh nor their blood that reaches Allah. But to him reaches the piety if, is, if it is there in your hearts. Taqwa. If you are God fearing that this thing reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subjected them to you so that you should glorify Allah, magnify him on the guidance that he has given you. وَبَشِّرِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And O Prophet Muhammad give good glad tidings to the believers.